Geronimo Stilton, The Mummy with No Name. I'm not crazy. I was a wreck. My paws were shaking, my whiskers were twitching, and my eyes felt like they were about to pop out of their sockets, roll back to my car, and drive away without me. I s -s -s saw a m -m -m mummy, but d -d don't be a f -f afraid, I managed to stutter. Benjamin looked surprised. A mummy, he murmured. Yes, a real mummy. And he told me to leave b -b before it's too late, I added. Benjamin looked around. I don't see anyone. Are you sure you're feeling okay, Uncle Geronimo? He squeaked. Bugsy looked at me. Then she began to whisper in Benjamin's ear. I couldn't hear everything she said, but I did make out the words Looney Tunes, Nuts, and Lost His Cheddar. I puffed up my fur. I am not crazy. I did see a mummy, I insisted. Bugsy giggled. Well, of course you saw a mummy, Uncle G, she said. There are tons of mummies here. We're in the Egyptian Mauseum. I groaned. I was beginning to think I should head right on back to my cozy mouse hole when someone or something pinched my tail. Rachel Rat hers, I shrieked. The mummy. Then I fainted. When I came to, an intellectual looking mouse with blondish fur and round eyeglasses was standing between Benjamin and Bugsy, leaning over me. You're right, Geronimo, you did see a mummy. That's why I asked you to come to the museum. I need your help in solving the mystery, the rodent murmured. I sat up immediately. I would recognize that mouse anywhere. It was my dear old friend, Professor, Professor Cyril B. Sandsnout. Her name is Cyril, last name Sandsnout, nickname Desert Rat. Who is he? A director of the Egyptian Mouseum in New Mouse City. His work is traveling around the world in search of mysterious papyruses. And his hobby is reading joke books. He loves to tell jokes to his friends and relatives. His secret is he adores playing pranks. Hmm. Two new assistants for the professor. Professor Sandsnout, I squeaked. The professor put one paw up in front of his snout. Shh, someone could be listening. Follow me, he whispered. The professor turned right, then left, then right, then left, then down a long hallway to a round room. He crossed the round room, then a rectangular room, and then a square room. Benjamin, Bugsy, and I followed close behind. Holy cheese! This place was worse than the corn maze at Rascal Ralph's Festival Fun Farm in Scamperville. At last, the professor stopped in front of a tiny door. A plaque on the door read, Private Office, Professor Cyril B. Sandsnout. Do not enter. The professor pulled an enormous key ring from his pocket. Then he selected a key and opened the door. We found ourselves in an office that was covered in dust. Achoo! Achoo! I sneezed. After about 300 more sneezes, I looked around. The place was covered from floor to ceiling with books. Do you know what all the books were about? Ancient Egypt, of course. Ancient Egypt. First of all, we have the Nile. Egyptian civilization developed along the Nile River. During periodic flooding, the waters of this river left precious mud along its banks containing lime, which made the land very fertile. Here we have some places. Giza, Cairo, Ashut, and Thebes. Some pyramids. The Pyramids of Giza. The plains of Giza are dominated by three pyramids which were built by the pharaohs Kuf, Kufu, Kafri, and Menkori about 4,500 years ago. The Great Pyramid, built by Kufu, 
is approximately 482 feet tall, and the base is immense. Each side is 756 feet long. It took more than 20 years to construct. The Sphinx, the Sphinx is 240 feet long and 66 feet tall. It may be the largest statue ever carved from a single block of limestone. Pharaoh Khafre had it sculpted around 2620 BC. But Moses IV, who ruled from 1412 to 1402 BC, freed the Sphinx from the encroaching sand and gave it a facelift. Legend blames Napoleon and his troops for shooting off the nose around 1798, but this story isn't true. In Greek mythology, the Sphinx was a monster with the body of a lion and the head of a human. It lived near the city of Thebes. It would devour all those who, when passing through, did not know how to solve its extremely difficult riddles or enigmas. The professor gave a deep sigh and turned to me. This room is soundproof from any eavesdroppers. Now we can talk without being heard, dear friend, he said, smiling. I smiled back, but I must admit the whole soundproof room thing made me a little panicky. I mean, what if the door got stuck and we couldn't get out? No one would be able to hear our screams. We'd end up just like the mummies in this place, very old and very dead. Well, except for the one I saw walking around. I shivered. I introduced Professor Sandsnout to Benjamin and Bugsy to take my mind off of things. The professor talked to the little mice about mummies, sarcophagi, and pyramids. Then he made them his official assistants. Cheesecake. Wow.